Hi everybody, it's me, Jessie. So in this video today, I'm going to be reading you another fairy tale from the book of fairy tales by Dean. This story is called The Darning Needle. So let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a darning needle who thought herself very fine. She decided she wasn't really a darning needle at all. She was certain she was an, an embroidery needle. Take great care of me. Hold me tightly, said the darning needle to the fingers as they picked her up. Don't drop me now. I am very fine, you know. If I were to fall on the floor, you would never find me again. Don't worry, said the fingers, as they held the darting meal round her waist. See, I am coming with my train, said the darning needle, and she drew a long thread without a single knot after her. The fingers took the needle to the cook's slipper. The leather of the uppers was torn and needed stitching together. Oh, this is vulgar work, complained the darning needle. I shall never get through. I'm too dainty. I shall break. I am breaking. And break she did. I told you so, didn't I? She went on. I am too fine. Now she is useless, thought the fingers, but they still had to hold on. The cook dropped sealing wax on the darning needle and stuck it in her neckerchief. Look, now I am a breast pin, said the darning needle, very pleased. I know that I was sure to become great. When one is special, one always becomes something extremely grand. And she laughed to herself, not out loud, for whoever heard a darning needle laugh. There she sat as proudly as a lady in a carriage. May I inquire if you are made of gold? She asked the pin who was her neighbor. You are rather pretty, but your head is peculiar. It is only small. You must see that it grows. But then, not everyone can have sealing wax dropped on them. Then the darning needle drew herself up so proudly that she fell out of the neckerchief into the sink. The cook was doing the washing up. Now I am off on my travels, cried the darning needle excitedly. But I do hope I shall not go too far. However, the darning needle did travel a long long way. I am too fine for this world, said she, as she lay in the gutter. But I shall never forget who I am. And she held herself very upright and smiled grandly. Splinters of wood, straw, pieces of soggy newspaper, and all sorts of things swirled past her. See how they float along, said the darning needle. They don't realize that someone as fine as myself is stuck down here. That splinter thinks nothing of himself. Pa, a mere chip. There goes a straw twirling round and round. Don't think so much of yourself. You may bump into a stone and that old newspaper. All that is printed upon it was forgotten years ago. You see how it unfolds itself? I shall sit patiently and quietly. I know my worth, and that is good enough for me. One day, the darning needle saw something glittering brightly beside her. She was certain it was a diamond. Actually, it was a chip of bottle glass. So here is the first picture of the darning needle in the hand there. And then when she was a breast pin up on here. And then this is her in the gutter. She's right in the middle there. 
in the gutter with the newspaper and all the other stuff. Hmm. How do you do? I am a breast pin. Surely you are a diamond. Oh yes, something like that, agreed the glass. So they each thought themselves very rare and precious and complained of the extraordinary haughtiness of the rest of the world. I have come from a lady's workbox, declared the darning needle. The lady was a cook. She had five fingers on each hand. I have never met anything as conceited as those five fingers, and yet they were only there to take me in and out of the workbox. Were they of noble birth? Did they shine? asked the bottle glass. Certainly not, replied the darning needle, but how arrogant they were. Finger was their surname. They stood very upright, side by side, although they were different sizes. The first, Thumbkin, was short and fat. He sometimes stood opposite the others and only had one bend in his back. He told me that if a person lost him, the man was no longer fit for military service. Foreman, the second one, poked into everything, dipped into sweet and sour, pointed at the sun and the moon, and pressed on the pen when the fingers wrote. Longman, the third, was a head taller than the others. Ringman, the fourth, wore a gold belt round his middle. And as for little man, he never did anything. This made him proudest of all. They were so stuck up and tiresome that I removed myself to the gutter. And now we sit here together and sparkle, said the glass. Just then, a deluge of water sent the splinter of glass floating away. There he goes, mused the darning needle. I shall remain here. I am so fine and proud of my respectability. She sat very upright, thinking lofty thoughts. I almost think I am the child of a sunbeam. I am so fine. But the sun cannot reach me here. Alack, even my mother cannot find me here. If I still had my eye, I might weep. But no, it is not refined to weep. Then one day, some little street urchins were waiting in the gutter, poking about and hunting for pennies, odd nails, and such like. It was very dirty work, but that made it all the more enjoyable as far as they were concerned. Oh, oh, cried one of them, pricking himself on the darning needle. He is a fine fellow, though. I am no fellow. I am a young lady, scolded the darning needle, but no one had heard. She had lost her sealing wax and had become quite black, but as a black makes, but as black makes a person look slim, she imagined herself finer than ever. These are the boys. When they find the darning needle, there's the boys. There sails an eggshell, said the boys, and they stuck the darning needle into it. White walls and a lady in black. What a striking contrast, said the darning needle. Now everyone can see me. I only hope I shall not be seasick. That would be the end of everything. But the darning needle was not seasick, and that was not the end of her. Here's her in the eggshell. Huh? This apart. Ah, I am steeled against seasickness. Here, one has the advantage over man. Now the worst is over. The finer one is, the more one can bear. 
crack went the eggshell as a wagon rolled over it. Ugh, what a weight, cried the darning needle. I think I shall be seasick after all. I shall break, I shall break. But she did not break, although the wagon wheel went right over her. Long did she lie there, and there let her lie. And that's it. <laughs> kind of a weird story, but from this book again. Love this book. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I hope you can uh, just sit back and listen to my voice and let me read to you, and maybe it will help you fall asleep. Uh, maybe it will just put you into a relaxed state. Uh, that is kind of my intention and my purpose for these videos. Um, so I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you join me for my next one. Thank you. Take care. We'll see you later.